I'm quarantined with a bunch of drag queens. <laughs> The pandemic is treating me not well. I mean, I've lost all my work. Clubs are shutting. So gigs literally disappeared within like three days. Even in times of adversity, we turn to artists to entertain us. Like how else are we gonna get through quarantine? We have to replace it with something, otherwise there's nothing. We have to go digital. I live in a house with two other drag queens. So I mean, three drag queens trapped in a house, all not knowing what to do with themselves. That's more recycling out of the bin than there is in the bin. <laughs> These people stress me out. I've got something to tell you. What? We ran out of gin last night. What? Have I got to go to little again? I'm going right now. I need gin! Just check it's recording. Yes, it's recording. So tonight is essentially back-to-back -back drag shows, going to all different performers from London, into their Instagram accounts and watching them live. The whole thing is that it so people tip. But the industry doesn't need to die because there aren't clubs. We're like roaches, we're not going anywhere. How do I focus this? Yeah, this is my room. So this is the dress I'm gonna wear tonight. We're going for like a news anchor 80s thing. And then I'm gonna wear this sexy wig with a little bump it in the top. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, people think of eyebrows and they think of me. <laughs> I guess I'm known for sort of like dancing like an absolute maniac, a bit like this dog. Look, lady, get out, get out, get out. Probably a massive reason that a lot of live streams and things are coming out of our community is that we we have to replace it with something, otherwise there's nothing. Even in times of adversity during the war, we turn to artists to entertain us to get through. Like, how else are we gonna get through quarantine? You're dunking my craggy feet in it. <laughs> oh my God, my lens broke again because of your feet. Oh, is it that ugly? And for a lot of people, quarantine means essentially going back into the closet, or it just means uh, feeling divorced from your community. Tonight, what is um, important is maintaining the community online. We are proving more resilient than maybe other communities. If it wasn't for drag, I don't genuinely don't think I'd be here. And a lot of people, when I say that, are like, oh, yeah, right. And I'm like, no, I actually don't think I would be here. Drag literally told me that I am okay, that my body, the way it is shaped. I genuinely never thought I'd find a point where I'd say I am so happy with who I've become physically. Mentally is a, is a journey that we all go through. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that mentally I am sound, but. <laughs> um, okay, another drink. What time are we on? It's 10 to. No. I don't like this chair in the middle. You can't see how small my waist is. Oh! Hi everyone. If you could just tilt that sexy camera down towards me a little more, I still need to get my muff on channel 4. <laughs> Hi, how are we doing? It's me, Margaret Marshall, the incredibly loose woman. And drag queens have always been a strong symbol of power and presence because it takes a lot of nerve to come out dressed in a certain way when society tells you that that is completely not what you should be doing. The only reason we are here is because of the Dragathon. All us queers with our faces on and our bloody lounges, giving you some entertainment so that you can hopefully donate and help people like me who have completely lost their jobs. You don't know when this is going to end. Everyone's going to have a really big orgy and a really big party. And I will be the entertainment for all of them. Just as Bette Midler sang in the bathhouses, I will sing at the pandemic orgy. Bye. Bye for me too.